Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Joomla Chat Conference. This is the fifth and final presentation on the first day of the Joomla Chat Conference. We have two more full days to go on Thursday and Friday. I'm Steve Birch, and I'm your host for all three days of the conference. And I'm delighted to welcome Javier for this session. Now, Javier is based out of Madrid. He is a web dev and a sysadmin and he specializes in particular in turning CMS websites into static sites. This makes sure that your site is much safer and also much faster. It comes with some real pros and some real cons. And in this session, Javier is going to take us through how you can use your Joomla site to spin up static sites. Javier, welcome. Hi, Steve. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here at the Joomla Shack conference. And uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Yeah, this is what my talk is going to be, uh, how you can make that yourself and how you can, uh, yeah, make them unhackable and blazing fast. And yeah, quick note about me, uh, more or less what you just said, uh, I have been telco and computer science engineer. I've been working more than 11 years as web developer also around eight years hosting my own website. So while well, hosting, managing all the servers and hosting websites for many other people. And uh, currently I'm CDO at Staging for All or Staging for Hosters, which uh, well offers staging services. And also uh, one of the features is, as you mentioned, converting sites to static, which I think is kind of uh, trendy nowadays. So, uh, if you want, I would just jump in to the talk. So what is this talk about? First, we're going to see what is a static website that everybody understands, what we, ex what we expect from a static website, and so that we keep the, everybody's on the same page. Then I will discuss a quick history of the web, how we came to where we are, the advantages of static websites, what we can and what we cannot do with the static website. And then the interesting question, can we use Joomla as a static generator? And if yes, how do we do that? So if we start by defining what is a static website, it is a collection of HTML files and also some assets. That means uh, CSS, JavaScript, some media files that can be anything, images, videos, everything else. But most importantly, this is a site that has no server interpreted languages in the, uh, behind it. So no PHP, no Ruby, no nothing, and no database. But most importantly, it's not related to the frequency of updating content. Most people think of static websites as a site that doesn't change. But this is not the definition of a static site. Static site in this, um, in this context that we are speaking is an HTML sites. So, Actually, this sounds quite old because at the beginning of times, well, we started all with static pages. The first websites were, were static pages. And well, they require some skills. The pages themselves, the websites were quite simple. There was no visitor interaction. They involved, there was some work involved in modify them. And you would only update them if the content changes. So. As a web dev, so your tasks were, so if you were developing them, you were also designing them. So this was more or less all you had to do. If we move forward, then the first interpreted languages came. So PHP, we'll know that. This opened a door of programming. So that required even more technical skills. We had more complex websites thanks to that. And we started offering some sort of interaction for our users, like forms or search, then together with databases, and we could move and evolve into a better software structure. The websites became a software in itself, and they were slightly less, uh, well, tedious to modify. So as a web dev, the tasks that we had were, of course, development and design, which was still more or less the same, but then we also had content maintenance. Then if we jump some years in the future, 
we come to what I call the CMS era, or what would used to be called the Web 2.0. And it looked at like the CMS is like the perfect system because it allowed almost everybody with no tech skills to create powerful websites that were easy to use. The websites could be really, really complex. We could have user interaction everywhere, forms, search, comments, forums, e-commerce, you name it. There was front-end, back-end. There could be multi-user, and we have templates and extensions. And most importantly, the client could update the website on his own. So, yeah, that looked like the perfect system, the, everything that we need. But as time goes by, we started learning that it wasn't as perfect as we wanted. So they could become slow and heavy and um, difficult and expensive to scale. Then we had vulnerabilities. They can get hacked. Um, then if you had too many plugins, which is the thing that many people still do, that plug everything that they can. And then over the years, some of these plugins get unmaintained. They become a burden. It makes it difficult or it opens the door for vulnerabilities, the plugins themselves. And this is kind of a key thing because PHP or major software updates, so CMS updates, leave, still leave many websites behind. And the reason is because all of a sudden the CMS requires technical maintenance, which is a new task in our portfolio of what a web dev has to do. We have to do technical maintenance. And that is not always easy. So there is no question that upgrading PHP is a hard thing. If you look at, this is the current data, that data we can read in Joomla stats or WordPress stats or even W3 techs. So we can see that only around 20% of the websites in PHP are in an up-to-date PHP version. This means something. Migrating your PHP, your CMS or your website is not that, that, that easy. People don't want to do that. And why is that? So, because it may break your site. Yeah, and this is a risk many, many users or website owners are not willing to, to take, even if it, it means leaving them in an, an unsupported PHP version that can get them hacked, which is kind of, well, contradictory. Um, so this uh, problem of updates um, has evolved into a, and a lot of lots of solutions into an industry to support that because that's an actual need. So we have backups. Of course, you take a backup before you update your site. Um, you have automated or bulk updates because you manage many, many sites and you want to make sure that all of them are up to date, but it takes a lot of time to do that. So you have integrity checks or, and you want to detect if your website has been hacked or also monitoring, detect if your website is down for whatever reason or even staging and solutions like, well, creating a copy of your website, test if the update works before you publish it into production. But the weird thing of CMSs is that many times the CMS is updated more often than the content itself for, for many, many web websites. And that's kind of a, well, thing to think about. So nowadays, the, the web keeps evolving. So we have this new concept of serverless, but we also see um, a resurgence of static sites. And, and why is that? Well, first, because they're fast, and we know now that speed improves SEO, then they're, they're easy and cheap to scale. And of course, they're secure and non-hackable, but most importantly, they do not require technical maintenance. So many people, many developers are thinking about this, and we have this explosion of static generators, static site generators, because, well, I've said it already, simple maintenance. You have all of a sudden markdown blocks that you keep in a, file, a flat file and you can deploy it over Git, which is very easy. It gives you performance, scaling, security, but they also can be used as a base for what's called a Jamstack, so modern JavaScript frameworks based on a skeleton created with HTML. So, for example, if you go to staticgen.com, 
you can find there more than 250 static site generators. Many of them are also done in, in PHP and many other programming languages. I don't, not only that, you have an explosion of a static website hosting, hostings that only offer that with, um, for example, with Git tools to deploy you know, a static website with directly using Git. And yeah, with many, many other different uh, features to support this. So the question is, if, is there room in this static world for, for our CMS? And the question is, normally when you, when you think in, in the last years and you think about a static site and you probably have converted some sites to static, it looks like, well, there are plenty of tools, kind of old thing, a manual work where you generate the static files and you have to upload it and you replace the website. So it ends being like the death of that website. Is that I'm not going out to update you anymore so you're going to die as a static site because it's irreversible. So you cannot go back. But nowadays, with all the technology that we have, if we want a solution that could have this simple and automated workflow, like all these other static site generators that we have seen, why if we could use Joomla as a static generator? So the, the concept we are looking for is something around this. We have the website in our development environment, whatever that may be. We pass it through some sort of static converter that we can repeat anytime we want in an easy way. And then we publish it into our hosting. So that would give us best of wor both worlds. We could have a site that is easy to modify, we would not need any kind of technical skills, the same as the CMS requires. It can be multi-user. The client updates the site on its own. It's 100% secure. It's very fast, simple, and cheap to scale, and without technical maintenance. So what's the catch? So uh, something must be off. Something is, is hidden here. So we, we do lose some things when we go static. And what is what are the things that we lose? So we lose basically all server processing that involves complex actions of any kind, for example, scheduled publishing, but most dynamic content you can think. It's best that you think that you are going to lose everything and then we will we'll see that we can recover many of those features. But yeah, some interactions, we'll lose them and some advanced functionalities, of course. This is not for our, all the websites in the world, but there are still some websites that could benefit from this. So just websites that are basically online presence or corporate presence, blogs, news, catalogs. We'll see that some others can benefit from this, but of course it's not for, for all websites. So what happens with interaction? So if we think we have, since we started uh, with static sites in the 90s, what else has changed since? And I would like to point out two things. One is a JavaScript, which is now a real language and allows us to do unimaginable things in the 90s. And then also the philosophy has changed. Uh, the CMS used to be like the whole uh, single thing that could do everything. And right now we are talking about microservices, about splitting tasks into different services, into different providers, so we can delegate tasks. And what are the things that we can do with that? So we can recover some sort of interactivity. And for example, the most basic interactivity that we would expect from a website is our contact forms. So contact forms is kind of one of the easiest things to, to do. You can do that with a, what it's called right now, a serverless function. Well, you've probably heard of Lambda, but it's basically, you can do it also with a PHP script somewhere else or any other solution, or you can rely on external services. Like you can be self-hosted, open source, like for example, Motic, or you can use any provider. There are plenty of just contact form providers that what would we expect from those providers that do the same that our CMS was doing? We would receive an email, we could do spam filtering, etc. Next thing, and that I think we have been doing outside of the CMS 
for last years already is our newsletters. So you already know MailChimp, SendGrid, any other option. So you also have open source solutions for that. But it's one of the examples that most people are used to already be doing outside of the CMS. Although there are great extensions for doing that inside the CMS. But this is something people are more familiar with. It is the same, it requires email sending, spam filtering. What about comments? Comments, they can be done different ways. Um, if you're skilled, you can you also use serverless functions and then you can put plug them back into your CMS if you want, but also you can use third party external services. Discuss is pretty much the standard. There are other solutions. I like um, ISSO a lot. It's open source, self-hosted. It's a very simple Python script. And yeah, it gives you everything you need without giving out data, which is something that, for example, everybody is very conscious right now about what happens with the data. So there are always the possibility to self-host all these different solutions so that you keep the data within your premises, for example. So what features would we require from them? So of course, moderation, notifying users, spam filtering, etc. Another feature that we would like to have is search. And search here, I would like to say that it depends on the size of the website. If it's a small website, JavaScript plugin can do the job pretty well. But if the site is too big, then I would go again for third-party services using JavaScript. You can use Google, you can use Algolia, or set up your own Elasticsearch. And yeah, I'll provide that, that features. Cookie banners, this is a very European thing. We have cookie banners everywhere. Well, if you want to do that, it's also JavaScript. So there's also the self-hosted version with, you, you can just copy this script in GitHub, which is very powerful, or you can rely on any third-party service. Most surprisingly, e-commerce. So I don't know if you already know that, but there is not only one solution for offering e-commerce based on JavaScript and with a static site, but there are plenty of them. There are lots of them and with full features that you can have even billing built in. So you just need to provide the skeleton or what are the items that the users can buy and everything else is built on top of a layer of JavaScript and they're amazing. This maybe seem overkill for some, I don't know, you have a website that only wants to sell a book you can just use directly the payment gateways. So if PayPal, Stripe, you can just put one of these pay buttons and you can manage everything outside of your website. You don't need any kind of server processing for that. So if this is possible, then how do we do this? So first thing I, I'd like to talk about is the development environments. I would just do two differentiations. If you're going to go local, which is kind of classic way of working, it's great. Your Joomla stays in your local environment. For example, you can have uh, XAMPP or WAMP, LAMP, whatever setup, or Lando, for example, for more modern setups. And then you turn your computer off, so the website is gone. So no, no problem of getting hacked, but it's also only for yourself. So there are also the possibility of having an online development environment, which is, can be just a subdomain in your hosting, for a password protector, for example. And this can allow that other users update the site, even the client, which I think is convenient in some setups. So if we think about that, what are the conversion options that we have? And here, these conversion options are more or less the same if you have an online setup, an online development environment, or a local development environment. I divided in two groups, do-it-yourself, which requires technical skills. That's basically some sort of scripts or programming. And then you have the hosted solutions or services that are normally more user-friendly, that kind of one-click solutions. You click a button, and that's it. So. If we go deeper into how do we do that, the concept, the general concept is something around these lines. So we have like our development environment, which is can be local or can be online. 
There we update the content. Then we have to have some sort of static converter that does the actual conversion. Then we need to deploy that to our web hosting. And then we have the live site with the different services that we need to provide from a dynamic content. For example, here I have chosen ISSO and Motic and Lambda for different functionalities. So going deeper, how do we do the static conversion? A convenient way would be using a Joomla plugin to where you can just click a button. Um, we'll see later, uh, well, in the next slide, uh, what's the status on that. And then there are like more, well, let's say manual CLI options for doing that. The good thing about those options, they can be integrated in some sort of automated or half automated uh, publishing workflow. The sad news about the Joomla plugins is there was a plugin called Static Content that allowed you to do that, click a button and generate the site, but it's currently abandoned. This is the GitHub repo. Um, it was working for Joomla, I think for Joomla 3.3. So maybe it's an opportunity for anybody to pick it up um, because I think it's, it's very, very useful. Um, then if we go to the more traditional tools, uh, VGET is a CLI only, it's very old um, software, has many options, but it also can be just a simple comment like the one I written here. Another option is HTT track, which also has a UI, not only CLI, it's also it's almost as old as VGET. It's designed only to do a static conversion, so has lots of options, but it also can be reduced to a simple comment. A newcomer is um, Headless Chrome with Puppeteer. It's very powerful. It's not so easy to set up. It involves many more things that what I just copied here. Um, I've linked to a blog post that explains how to do that. Uh, it's, as I said, not as straightforward, but the resulting platform is way more powerful. You can also create screenshots. You can do many, many things with that. It is better where it's a modern way of approaching this, this problem, especially if you need to render JavaScript uh, before or for getting the actual DOM and stuff like that. There may be more options. These are the third, the three that I would recommend right now. The next brick in your setup that you need uh, would be the scripts. This um, I won't go into details with that. You would need some sort of trigger. May that be a Git hook, web hooks, some command line commands or cron jobs that would trigger the rendering scripts, then the deployment scripts. The good thing is all this can be added to a continuous integration or continuous uh, deployment environment so that you could get that desired automatic uh, workflow. As said, this is kind of technical. If, um, if somebody wants uh, to discuss these options later, I'm totally open to further questions. So getting out of the do-it-yourself, if we cross the line and go to the third-party solutions, well, I don't know if to say if this is surprising or not, but there's plenty of options, especially for WordPress. The most basic solution that we can find, and that's the simplest one, is just having everything built in into the hosting. And for that, there's um, like a booming industry in, industry in WordPress right now, which is called serverless VP hosting, that what they're doing is just basically that. They, they provide a way of converting your WordPress into a static site and provide some features in the dynamic content. Right now, two big players, Hardy Press and Shifter, are more veterans. And then there are a couple of newcomers um, that are right now in bed. Yeah, gives impression to be a booming industry. So how, how do they work? It's more or less what, what we have already talked about. You keep the CMS in a private environment. Can it be Docker? Can It can be subdomain. Then when the content is updated, you regenerate it and publish with a single click. Forms are managed in the hosting dashboard. I mention them here because I think that they are potentially compatible with Joomla. Some of them that have FTP access, you can just remove the WordPress and well, this is a lamp. I mean, this is PHP. It depends on how they're managing the using HD access or not. 
how are they managing their rewrites, but I think they can be potentially compatible with Joomla. Um, their business model is uh, like any other hosting, monthly or yearly subscription, and the pain point is that there it requires web hosting migration. The different solutions to that um, could be external solutions, and here there are a couple of providers, and I think there are more coming soon. Uh, right now, the only one that's um, full compatible with Joomla is staging for all. Then um, deployed as static is coming soon, and well, there may be others, uh, probably in the near future. So, how does staging for all work? So, it's more or less similar. So, the CMS is in a private staging environment, password protected. It can be multi-user. So, when the content is updated, you regenerate and publish with a click and forms are managed in the platform dashboard, uh, same as the other solutions. It's a set multi-user and it has a monthly subscription. The good thing is you don't need to change hosting for that. Deploy to static is a different kind of service. It's compatible with any CMS because it renders the website from outside. It does not need to install anything inside of the CMS or anything. It also does a funny thing, which is it uploads the static version together with the CMS. It does not override it. So you always can toggle back to dynamic and static. So you can always do this switching. And to do the new content, what you can do is you switch it, uh, the CMS back on. You add a new blog post or new content that you want. Then you re-render it. And then with a click, you publish it back to static, which is kind of... Interesting. Also, forms are managed in the platform dashboard. And it, this works using a credit system, like you pay each time you deploy a website. Like you want to update a website every three months, then you don't have to pay a monthly subscription. And of course, there is no need to change the hosting. I think this covers pretty much what the current industry is about, the current status of the industry is about um, static websites. So why don't you start? using Joomla as a static generation generator and make your sites unhackable and blazing fast. Who is not missing all these crazy gifts? <laughs> so, any questions? Yeah, thank you so much, Javier. We do have quite a few people commenting and uh, discussing different options in the chat. Yeah. Uh, one from Tim, he says he uses the JotCache extension to, to pre-call and generate all his pages with a super long cache time. And he ends up with all the pages generated in the cache and waiting to be called. It's, it's not entirely static, but it seems to be a, a workaround of sorts to rely entirely on cached pages. Yeah, this is a, there are many solutions that provide that as a means of caching to improve performance. But this does not protect your website. Your admin is still there your vulnerable plugins or exploits are still there, so they can be exploited. So I agree that those solutions, there are plenty. I know JCH, for example, or there are many, many other extensions that do that. They pre-create a st static version of it, but the CMS, the Joomla is still behind that and can get hacked. That's, that's the only downside of it. I mean, you cannot forget about that website because it will eventually get hacked. So you still require technical maintenance. One question in the chat is, how would a static site generator work with something like progressive web apps? Would you still be able to generate those using these techniques? Oh, progressive web apps, I mean, depends on what are the functionalities that you need for the progressive web app. I mean, the, the progressive web app itself can be static. You will have only the service worker and you with over JavaScript, you will be polling or ask, uh, talking to an API, which is external. I mean, you can do that. I think it depends on what are the functionalities that you want. If you have to provide an API, the API endpoint must be something. It cannot be static, of course. But pro most probably all of the PBAs are the progressive web apps end up being, let's say, static because they are only based on HTML and JavaScript files. I don't know if I have answered the question. I think so. If, um, if there's any follow-up, um, I'm sure the attendee will put it in the chat. And um, okay. okay, yeah, they're happy. Okay. Okay, so uh, 
Javier, do you do you work with a, a fairly wide range of customers? Is there a particular type of customer that you end up recommending static site generators for? Um, a, well, we, we do have... Works better for some, some types of website? Yeah, it definitely works better for some types of websites. So there are many a website, single website owners that just have one website, but they don't want to be bothered about the technical maintenance. They just want to update the content. This is one example of, um, I don't know, a typical um, corporate website, which has also a blog or where they keep their catalog on, but nothing else. And there's also many agencies that have, let's say, like four or five huge websites that require all of their efforts, but then they have like 30 or 40 small websites that can be perfectly fine as static. So there's kind of a mix of customers. So Cool. Well, thank you so much indeed, Javier. That was a really interesting presentation. To wrap up, do you have any live Joomla-based static sites that people can take a look at? Oh, sure. Well, uh, one of uh, my websites, Staging for Hosters, is a Joomla site. Um, I'm going to kind of look it up. It's a Joomla website with full working forms, which is uh, converted to static, for example. Um, I can write it in the chat if you want, or staging for st- staging for with the number hosters.com, for example. This is working like that. Cool, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Javier, and um, thank thanks to much. thanks to all of you that attended today. We are going to be back over the next couple of days with nine sessions every day. We're going to have nine sessions on Thursday, and then nine again on Friday. It's not a 100% replacement for the Joomla World Conference that would have been held in London this weekend. But hopefully there'll be quite a lot of value from these sessions. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks to Javier. And I hope to see many of you guys in another session over the next couple of days. Thank you very much.